sure you'll remember our next guest as one of the most trusted voices on our mm -hmm. TV screens during her many years as a BBC journalist and newsreader. Four years ago, though, Kate Silverton decided to embark on a career change mm -hmm. and now has retrained as a child therapist. Kate joins us today as she publishes her new book, There's Still No Such Thing as Naughty. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Kate. Lovely to see Good you. Good morning. To see you. So, there's no such thing as naughty. Mm -mm. For sure. For sure. <laughs> How do you prove this? <laughs> well, in the book, so if we, we benefit now from um, the most incredible neuroscience, specifically neurobiology, that really helps us to understand our children's behaviour. Mm. And essentially, when we understand the nervous system and how it drives all of our behaviour, we, our children's behaviour starts to make sense. And so this is why I say there's no such thing as naughty, because when we can understand that, we can respond to our children in a way that regulates them and we see less of the big behaviour that we often ascribe to naughty. Right. I don't doubt we'll have mums and dads sitting at home, grandparents or, or guardians sitting at home saying, it's lovely to hear that, Kate, yeah. but I have a child that displays naughty behaviour. Yeah. Can you explain what you mean and perhaps how they can cope with the naughty behaviour in, in, in the terms that you see it? Yeah, so I start the book by explaining what I call construction, which is understanding how our children's brains develop and their nervous system. When we understand that the brain develops in sequence, so the bits of our children, the bits of the brain, the prefrontal cortex that I call the wise owl, that regulates big behaviour and big emotions, doesn't finish its development until our children are in their 20s. <gasps> So, wow, I'm shocked. Yeah. I didn't realise it was so old. No, this is why I wrote the book, because yeah. as a parent, you go, why yeah. is this so hard? Why is my child lying prostate on the supermarket floor? Well, actually, what we understand as a, ta a tantrum is actually a neurochemical wildfire. So if I said to you that under fours need help with their emotional regulation every 20 seconds... Wow. ..because they haven't got a fully developed prefrontal cortex that's the part of the brain that helps us to regulate big emotions. So our children are all wandering around in the world, mm. dealing with all sorts of stuff every day. And what happens is their stress response, which is their nervous system's response, I feel a bit frightened, I feel a bit nervous about this, that's sending up a whole neurochemical wildfire. Uh -huh. And without our help, if we just see them as naughty, sit there, do that, you're being naughty, not understanding that actually their nervous system is just, out, is, is just fizzy, as I call it. Yes. That they might be afraid, they might be anxious so if we see it as naughty we're not then helping our children to regulate and bring themselves back to balance and that is what is key for good future mental health because we want to learn how to regulate our emotions and how to manage stress so that's our job to I love that um, analogy of, of being a fizzy nervous system. Having had uh, two boys now who are Sam's nearly 19 and Jack's 17, one who had a very fizzy nervous system, and the other one that didn't really was much more compliant and, and just wanted to behave and was mm. sort of, you know, a much easier child to parent. It was, the, it was the younger one that didn't. So if someone has a child who's having a tantrum in the, in the supermarket and we've all been there or is losing it and has this very fizzy nervous system, how can you calm them down? Because often in that scenario, there is no calming them down. No, and that's a really good question. So I'll use my son as an example. There's lots of examples in the book mm -hmm. of where my own children, so my son's quite fizzy as well. And as an example, you know, he kept jumping up and down on the bed. Mike was going absolutely bananas and he said, but my way of parenting, barking at him, get off the bed, stop being so naughty. He's like, right, what would Kate do? And actually in that moment is acknowledging and what I call SAS, say what you see. He says to my son, Wilbs, you seem a bit fizzy, what's up? My son stopped jumping and said to him, I'm really nervous about my play date later. He'd gone to a new school, had a new friend, and the fizziness was his natural way, because we all have a natural way of exercising the stress energy. Our children do that when they're jumping big behaviour. He, he was just, and he's showing us, look, I'm fizzy, but he's doing it. His brain is sort of unconsciously showing us. So Mike's like, Ah, I can help with that. So say what you see. Sweetheart, you're either looking really cross, you're stomping your feet, you're on the floor. Naming the, what the behaviour, say what you see or say what you sense your child is feeling. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge this is feeling really hard right now. This is feeling really, really hard. So you're engaging your child at that moment and then going into soothe. I'm going to lend you my calm and say, wow, you are having really big feelings. You're really disappointed. You're really frightened. Whatever you sense the emotion is. And then we are bringing our children back to balance using our calm. It's the nervous system 
that we're really talking about here. It's not words, as you say, because in that moment, mm -hmm. our children can't hear it. Their brain, the parts of their brain that are really fizzy, can't hear long sentences. So we've got to lend our calm, not join their chaos. And I explain how in the book with lots of practical examples and exercises. Because one thing that you also express in the book is that quite often we put labels on our children, especially ADHD. Um, I think actually labelling children in any way, shape or form, whether that's kind naughty. of... Naughty. Naughty or loud or shy or what... I, I think that that's incredibly dangerous anyway because I think they grow into those labels. But it's you've kind of faced a little bit of backlash as well about... ADHD diagnosis. Yeah, so to be, look, it's a really, it's a complex, multifaceted subject in terms of diagnosing children. And it, to be really, really clear, um, this is always so difficult in interviews, but I'm not at this point talking, there are parents for whom children rightly, and I say it throughout the book, if you are concerned about your child's behaviour, if they're behaving in ways that do not make sense, that are frightening, concerning, always seek professional yes. advice and support. It is absolutely right and proper that we go to seek diagnosis for our children if they're in distress, if they're struggling, absolutely. So there's a cohort of parents here and rightly, and, and what I say is some of the assessments that are done, a lot of the assessments that are being done are rigorous and they're asking a lot of questions that are the right questions to be asking. And so if parents are finding that they've had the right diagnosis, they're comfortable with the diagnosis, and their children are thriving as a result. Yes. Fantastic. So I'm not talking about, I think that's the cohort of parents that mm -hmm. have gone, ah, you're saying, you know, and, and it can feel very triggering. And I completely understand that. My concern as a therapist working clinically with children, and what I have learned in my training is that a lot of the symptoms of ADHD in particular, or even ASD, are very similar to that when a child has experienced trauma. Right. They overlap. So my concern... What sort of trauma would that be, though, Kate? Well, we talk... I mean, there's... We, we can talk about small t, t trauma, which can be parents going through a very acrimonious divorce. Mm -hmm. It can be um, bereavement, a shock bereavement. It can be more complex trauma, of course, um, for children who are adopted. So as much as I've had a lot of parents even reaching out in the last week to say, for example, one just yesterday, my um, child is adopted, they're displaying all these symptoms, but we actually haven't looked at the experience, sadly. Now they're medicated and she's saying, I'm just wondering if I he needs therapeutic support. So what I want to do is to have a really calm conversation around let's look at the child as an individual, mm -hmm. make sure the assessments are being done rigorously because that isn't always the case. As I say, if you are happy and your child is thriving, yes. fantastic. But if your child has experienced trauma or if you're concerned, let's just have a conversation and understand trauma and how it mm. can manifest and also... Um, to look at our environment now. Children are more static, they're on screens more, they're playing less, playtime at school, half an hour very often ch for children. We know that children need to be active. Mm -hmm. So a lot of neuroscientists and psychiatrists are saying we're concerned that we're raising children in an environment that's just not conducive to childhood. Yeah. So, and that can create fizzy symptoms. Yeah. So we want to look at all of this holistically and not in a really divisive way. And I, as I say, I have to stress, I've got lived experience. I've lived with the symptoms myself of ADHD. I get how much of a struggle it can be. And so I've got every compassion for parents in that situation. But I want to be sure that we're looking after all children. I feel calmer ever. just talking to you, Kate. Yeah, you it's about educating about you, yourself, is isn't it? Uh, we're out of time, unfortunately. We yeah. didn't get onto all sorts. We have, you must come back. Will I'd you love please? to come back. It because the brilliant. screen thing, I think, is huge. Yeah. Yeah. The naughty step thing, I think, is really interesting. And, and, and sort of all of those things that we've touched on, they're all in the book. There's some amazing practice advice if you are parenting right now you need some help and support because because there is no manual for no. it when the babies arrive no. uh, these sorts of things can really help Kate thank you for coming in and thank you for having me thank you very much